Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, July 3rd, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and I'm recording from New York City, New York. Over the last few days, Guy noticed some interesting hits to his honeypot, and we have really no idea what vulnerability they're actually looking for here. It looks like they're testing for a fairly simple to exploit code inclusion vulnerability. They're trying to run a die command that will then output a string Probably they're looking for that string then in order to identify systems that are vulnerable. The string they're using is hello Peppa followed by an explanation mark and then it should display nine times the number nine because they're taking a string that is nine times the number one and then multiply it by nine. So if you have any idea what they're trying to exploit here, take a look at Guy's diary post for further details. And positive security came out with their diameter vulnerabilities exposure report for 2018. Now, diameter is a protocol that's heavily used in signaling for LTE, and it replaces the good old SS7 protocol, which of course has been the root cause of many problems in 3G and earlier networks. As a quick summary in their report, Positive Technologies states that diameter does solve a lot of these problems, but the problem is that a lot of the features, in particular encryption in diameter, isn't always enabled by providers, which then again leads to much of the same issues that we had with SS7. In some cases also, diameter isn't actually used. For example, when you're using voice over LTE, you're essentially doing voice over IP or using protocols like SIP, and with that you inherit some of the problems that these signaling protocols like SIP are exposed to. Also, if you're sending an SMS message, you're actually downgrading usually to 3G. And again, SS7 is used as a protocol for signaling and you're exposing yourself to the good old SS7 vulnerabilities. So in short, if well configured, then diameter can certainly solve many of the problems that we are having with SS7, but in itself, it's not of the end of all cell phone vulnerabilities. Tracer is a company that does produce a Bitcoin wallet. And while well, it's very popular, it's a little hardware token and it also offers a website in order to recover your funds in case the token is locked or lost. Well, that website was now the subject of an attack that was either using DNS cache poisoning or BGP to redirect users to a lookalike website. Not really clear what was used. However, affected users were created with an invalid certificate, even though they apparently went to the correct site. This does not appear like a problem with Tracer's website. If anything, they did the right thing by using HTTPS everywhere, and that way their users got the warning of the bad certificate. That's exactly what we have HTTPS for. And Symantec has released a free and simple web-based tool in order to check if your router may be infected by VPN filter. If you remember, VPN filter was a big story about a month ago and affected routers may have a specific module installed that modifies SSL traffic. What Symantec's website does is it checks if any SSL traffic coming from your network is being modified by this plugin. So there is a chance that other malware or proxies and such will do the same thing. So yes, there's a chance of false positives. Also, there may be false negatives uh, because uh, the router may be infected with VPN filter, but this Esler uh, plugin, as they're calling it, has not been enabled. But if you're interested, you will find a link to the test site in the show notes. 
Well, and this is it for today. There will not be a podcast tomorrow due to the July 4th holiday here in the United States. So next podcast on Thursday, or if there is absolutely no news and nothing to talk about, I may actually delay the next podcast to Friday. Thanks and talk to you again on Thursday or Friday. Bye.